State hospitals are finding it more and more difficult to attract new doctors and health centres are increasingly overstretched and understaffed. Contracts are not appealing enough to doctors and the chaotic broken healthcare system, coupled with a huge workload, are putting many off applying for government hospital posts. The situation is becoming critical and the health minister has a tough job on his hands to salvage state healthcare. Ricky Shields reports. Is it any wonder, considering the recent problems in the state healthcare system, that doctors and other health professionals are not exactly chomping at the bit to work within the system? In February, doctors went on strike to protest against raising their retirement age to 68, saying the work they do is unhealthy, arduous and demanding, and that nearly 40% of doctors are on short-term contracts with not enough job security. Also in February, nurses went on strike to protest because the health ministry has been ignoring their calls to regrade their profession as university graduates and to match the salary scales set up for the civil service. So now, Health Minister Yorgos Bamboridis is facing a recruitment crisis as well as trying to fix a broken system and bring into being the much-talked-about, much-heralded National Health Service, which I will remind you is a condition of our agreement with the Troika in 2013. The Doctors' Union, Pasigui, contends that the health service is in ruins, saying doctors are not given the right incentives, they're offered short-term contracts, which means they'll be temporary, and this alone cannot motivate anyone. The Civil Servants' Union, Pasigui, chimed in as well, saying that doctors don't come to the public service for three reasons employment terms short-term contracts and workloads although why workloads should be a problem i don't know the health ministry meanwhile is trying to make changes rightly or wrongly to give state hospitals more autonomy which they say in the long term will allow hospitals to recruit with more attractive contracts and incentives the elephant in the room here is that the reorganization is one-sided arranging for hospitals to run themselves at the same time trying to deal with belligerent unions with the ear of senior politicians and all that that entails Meanwhile, what about the public? I don't hear anyone saying that the public need better access to healthcare. Doctors aren't saying, oh, we pledged a Hippocratic Oath, so we'll treat the patient in front of us regardless of pay. Their earnings may not be as high as they might like, but they still earn considerably more than most. Not only that, within the state healthcare system, they tend to leave half day. They're only there till 2.30, 3 o'clock. I know a few doctors recently have left the state system and gone into private practice for more money and less stress, which they're entitled to do if they can. But how do we fix this? We need a more patient centred approach, both from the ministry and unions. If we pay our national insurance, we should be able to go to any hospital we want, public or private, with the government paying set rates to all hospitals for set treatments. This will take the pressure off state hospitals and the increased volume of work for private hospitals will enable them to make up any shortfall in the prices they might want to charge. This will also free state hospitals from being overstretched, enabling them to upgrade and improve their service too. This wonderful island of ours has under a million people. We've come through so much as a nation in the last 50 years. Surely we can fix this. But all parties need to focus on the patient to stand any chance of getting it right. This is Mr Shields reporting for Rock FM. On air and online at rockfmcypress.com Today's best mix. Rock FM.